Hello everybody and welcome back to Throttle Grotto. This week we're going to figure out the turbo situation on the 1.8T conversion in the 1975 Rabbit. Stay tuned. <music> Alright, so I'm getting a later start this week on the video than I really hoped to. Um, partly because I've had to chase a bunch of parts and figure out um, what I actually need to make this turbo setup uh, work in this car with the least amount of complications. So, so one of the differences that I've run into is the Audi manifold, which I actually have a spare one over here. So this is the Audi manifold for those of you that aren't familiar. And if you picture me as the block, here's the mounting surface for the turbo. And this one is the Mark IV manifold. And you can see that it mounts the turbo almost a full cylinder over to the uh, driver's side of the car. Um, why do I need that? Well, because of where, because of where the turbo actually lines up on the car, which I can show you guys down here. So you can see here, this is the cold side of the turbo, and I have this big lump here. I can't really index the turbo because of where the oil and coolant lines need to run. Um, so I've already loosened this up. I can take this off. And you can see on the KO3, it's only got four place, four bolt holes. So you don't have a lot of choice on where you can move it. So I could line it up. Uh, let's see here. It's going to line up right about there, which points it almost directly at the firewall. So I've decided to bag... So I've decided to bag the whole AEB uh, manifold and turbo. Um, I picked up the Mark IV uh, manifold and a Mark IV turbo. I'm going to put all that stuff on and we're going to see if things line up a lot better, which I suspect they will because they're designed for a transverse application. So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay, so now that we have the turbo mounted, um, I'll show you some of the little details that I'm going to have to work out um, in order to make this work. This already works 100 times better. Um, I'm going to have to make some compromises on a few things that I wanted to do, um, but that's okay. Okay, so the way I've got things kind of laid out here, it's a really rough really rough, uh, let's say a rough draft on how, how I want this tubing to go. Um, but what I have, I have my 180 coming out of the uh, intercooler, which I'm gonna cut down and tuck it in real tight. So um, that way I can do a coupling here. I can weld this to this elbow. This will get welded to this elbow. And then we come up here um, to where the the turbo is, and I will have to do a 45 onto there, and I might, uh, I'm not sure, quite sure how I'll do that yet, um, I might do a, I'll probably do a coupling there, get rid of this 45, and then weld to this pipe. So that's taken care of. Um, this will probably end up sitting right about here, which is nice and out of the way of everything. I could actually build a bracket to hold it to the engine. Um, then from the other end of the intercooler, I need a, a rubber coupling here, which actually that one there might get cut down and just used here, and that might actually work, work perfectly. Um, then I've got my, I don't remember what degree this is. 165, something like that. It goes right into the throttle body to that pipe. So uh, that's all taken care of. Um, 
and uh, then I just need clamps and uh, that side of the of it will be done. Now another issue that I'm running into the turbo that I got came with this fancy little ABD racing inlet here. Um, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to see if I could use a factory airbox uh, over in the factory swallowtail location and do the intake from there. So I'd have to come up and around across the back of the engine and over that way. Not, uh, not impossible, um, but maybe making a compromise and bringing it over here to the uh, to the later location and then just using a cone filter would be adequate. Um, but I think it'd look kind of cool with a swallowtail airbox in there. But I don't even know if I have a swallowtail airbox anymore. All right, so if I slide you guys underneath the car, I'll show you what's going on on the back side here and some of the things I'm gonna have to change. Okay, so underneath here, a few things that I'm gonna run into some issues with are my shift cables. My shift cables are definitely not going to work uh, with the turbo mounted where it is. They're gonna rub right on that turbo. So I'm gonna have to come up with some way to keep them off the CV shaft and, I'm gonna move my light here, some way to keep them both off the CV shaft and off the turbo. Um, and that may involve running them, bet, putting a little bend in them and running them up into this void here. The coolant line here, you can see, uh, hopefully you can see um, this fitting here on the block. Let me see if I can slide, there we go. Um, so this fitting on the block is not correct for this type of a fitting, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Again, probably a Mark IV item maybe just threads in, although I might be better off just changing this end to a to a 90 and uh, making that making that change there. And of course, the downpipe. The downpipe is going to be significantly different because of this flange. Um, but it should be fairly easy to make because it comes off this flange. I can put in I can put in right here, I can put in a flex coupling, and then come down here and then right into the exhaust tunnel. So the fabrication for that will be fairly easy. I already have plenty of tubing to make that work. So that's, that's what I have to work on. Um, I've got a a few other things to figure out, but getting this figured out was a, a huge step forward. Um, I've been kind of honestly like putting it off because I really didn't want to think about it. Didn't want to think about buying another turbo and buying a manifold and swapping things out, but honestly this is going to work out a lot better. So if you're going to do if you're going to do an AEB swap, get all the Mark IV stuff because it's going to make it a ton easier. <laughs> Okay, great news. I thought I was gonna have to cut the video off there because I didn't have the right pieces that I needed to be able to actually physically mount the turbo in the car um, and fab everything up. I needed a downpipe flange. I needed the oil return and feed lines for the turbo. Um, and I had none of that until today. Now I have all I need. Um, there was a U-pull at Junkyard that had an Audi TT, if you can believe that. So I got the downpipe from the TT. I got the oil, uh, the oil line from the turbo to the uh, oil filter housing, which was like, uh, this is like literally Junkyard gold for me right here. I got the oil drain line from the turbo, um, which goes Kind of like that behind the behind the engine and then I also got one of the coolant lines um, I have a I have a rubber one uh, that I'm going to try to use instead but if the rubber one doesn't work out now I have a nice metal one um, with the uh, pressed in and flared fitting on the end uh, that this goes around the passenger side of the motor so I'm pretty excited about getting all this stuff and uh, 
getting it uh, getting it for like 20 bucks. <laughs> Let's get some of these things put on here and uh, see where we're at. So that is it. I have all of the boost tubing figured out now. Um, basically, I've made the, the run as short as I can get it. Um, and I've got a pretty nice direct inlet to the, uh, or from the turbo to the intercooler and then to the, uh, um, to the intake manifold. So uh, I'm pretty happy with how this is. Of course, I still have a lot of work to do to uh, weld some of these together. Um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pie cut this connection up here before I weld that together. Um, I do have a little bit of adjustability in in this hose here, which will let me uh, kind of adjust the angle there a little bit. Now, ideally, I'll probably tuck that in a little bit tighter towards the intake manifold. Um, which means I'll have to shorten this up, but when I weld this, this will get shorter. So then I can pretty much make that a straight shot. Uh, pull this, you know, this will get tightened up a little bit. And then that'll be a nice straight shot into the, uh, 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 from the turbo into the intercooler. Um, so, um, huge progress. Um, now I, I, I'm going to have to get a different... Uh, oil filter housing, which is completely fine. Um, I think maybe an ABA one might have a front facing uh, a front facing fitting. I'm gonna have to do a little junkyard homework and see see what uh, see what I can get there. Um, but all of our all of our tubing is coming out pretty well at this point. Um, and just for grins, I'm gonna throw that downpipe on and see where it lines up. Okay, well the real quick short story on that is it absolutely doesn't. Um, but the, the plus is I have a flange um, which fits the downpipe. So now I can actually make, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, this isn't gonna work out, but it's only tacked together. So I even, I even can grind these tubes, or the welds off these tubes and reuse a bunch of those for making my downpipe. So, um, so the downpipe I'm going to have to make again next week. <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully next week I'll start welding up all of these boost tubes and working on the downpipe, get the exhaust finally joined up to where it should be. And then we just have cooling and oil distribution to worry about. Um, and then we can actually try to test fire this motor. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually getting closer than I thought I would be, but getting this turbo and all the stuff sorted out um, Not necessarily on paper, but like in in real in real life um, was a huge jump forward in this project, so um, So that's all for me from today Until next time get out there and work on something <laughs>